I'm Rick Buck and I've been a dentist for 15 years and I've been removing wisdom teeth for 13 years. You are about to see how I extract these three wisdom teeth, including this impacted lower one. So like and subscribe if you have teeth. Let's start how we always do by numbing up all the teeth. Now if you went to an oral surgeon, they would knock you out so you didn't experience it all. But here, we just numb you up and that's adequate for actually most people. I first take this instrument called a periosteal elevator and poke the gums to make sure they are numb. And they are numb, so now I use the same instrument to tease the upper portion of the attached gums away from the wisdom tooth. Now, hopefully you can see the tooth in the back there, but this is what we as dentists see when we're removing a tooth. Next, we take this new instrument called an elevator, not a periosteal elevator, and wedge it between the wisdom tooth and its surrounding bone. If this were a deep wisdom tooth, as we'll see in a little bit, we would lay back the gums all the way and the bone covering the wisdom tooth. But for this patient, we're just gonna use this prying motion with my elevator for a little bit. The patient doesn't feel pain if they are fully numb, but will feel the pressure of this. And that pressure takes a few minutes, maybe like 10 minutes to get used to. Now it's difficult to see because I have the patient closed down halfway. That way when removing upper wisdom teeth, you can stretch the cheek to place your instruments optimally and it doesn't even hurt the patient pulling the cheek. Plus after years of doing this, you can just feel right where you're supposed to put your instrument and where you're supposed to put the pressure to loosen the tooth. Now, if you notice, the wisdom tooth is starting to move and will move further until it eventually just pops out. And that's, uh, as you can see, what will happen here. In this case, my assistant will just suction the tooth out with her high volume suction. Now, we're going to do the same thing on the left side. You might note that this side is even harder to see as I'm putting pressure on the tooth. And once again, that is true for me too. I'm putting a lot of pressure on the tooth and to retract the cheek all the way, I have them close halfway down. And if you look really close, you can see the tooth and it is moving. And eventually, as I'm just moving and moving and putting pressure on it, it will just, boom, pop out once again. Then once that tooth is popped out of place, then it's just a matter of getting the tooth out of the mouth. A lot of the time, once again, you just suction the tooth out, but sometimes I'll even just grab it with my fingers or an instrument if I'm holding it. You wanna get it out as soon as possible because you don't want it to migrate to the back of the throat and have the patient possibly swallow it. Let's now move on to the left lower impacted wisdom. Before we start on this tooth, we give it a little more anesthetic because sometimes it just doesn't get fully numb in this exact spot. Now, because this tooth isn't fully exposed, we're going to make incisions in the gums, extending backwards and to the tooth in front of the wisdom tooth. I need to cut the gums precisely because in a small percentage of patients, an important nerve will run just behind that wisdom tooth. And so you want to stay clear of that just in case it is the nerve running on a different course. Next, we put that periosteal elevator that we used in the beginning and we put it into the incision and we just pry the gums and expose the underlying bone. It does take a little bit. Sometimes this uh, the gums are really well attached to the bone. Now, the reason we're moving back the gums is that we will be drilling a small slot in the bone around this tooth. And that is now what you will see me doing. So now as I drill on the bone, I only remove bone from the cheek side of the tooth because that is a safe area and will very likely not cause any damage to any important nerves. And another important thing about removing this bone is that it will mostly fill back in when the tooth is gone. Now the reason why I'm drilling bone away from the front of this tooth is so that I can get my instruments in a position to put leverage on the tooth. You will also notice that I'm not just drilling on the bone, but I'm also drilling on the wisdom tooth to make space between the adjacent tooth as well. This is done so I can also get instruments in there. Once I can adequately get my instruments in place so I can put leverage on the tooth, I will put a lot of pressure on the wisdom tooth. So you're seeing me do that right now. Now, the reason why I'm trying to put leverage on the tooth normally is to remove the tooth like I did for the other two wisdom tooth. But in this case, I'm just trying to loosen it a little bit. And that's because it doesn't have enough room to come out right now. That way, if the tooth breaks in a further step, the tooth is at least a little bit loose and easier to come out. Now it's important to note for what I'm about to show you that the wisdom teeth sometimes are impossible to take out as one whole tooth. And that is because 
One root will want the tooth to roll out one way and the other root will want to roll out another way based on the way they're curved. And then if there's no third way or compromise between these roots with the other teeth, you must create its own pathway out. Therefore, the next step is cutting the tooth down the middle to split the roots and the tooth in half. Once we cut the tooth mostly down the middle, then we split the tooth by prying with that same elevator that we seen before. You can tell once the tooth is split by either a cracking noise that it makes, or when you pry, the pieces will move in opposite directions as you see here. Quickly, my favorite toothbrush, floss, and other dental products by far are in Amazon affiliate links in the description below this video. Or you can order them from the store below this video as well without even leaving this YouTube video, but only if you're using a handheld device. Those dental products will give you stunning results every time you clean your mouth. And you can also watch my video posted at the end of this video to see why they are the best and how to brush and floss your teeth with immaculate results. Now that the roots are separated, we keep wedging them until one of them becomes really loose and then we start to remove that piece that becomes really loose first. I can tell the piece in front here is really starting to get loose and so is the back one a little bit. Now, because of the curvature of the roots, these two sections of tooth are gonna roll out into each other. And once again, that's why they couldn't come out at the same time in the first place. But because they want to roll into each other, I need to cut off the top of the tooth so the root will have a clear path on its way out. Once I cut most of the crown of the one piece of tooth, I break the top portion off and now the front root has a clear path to come out. So now it's just a matter of pressure on the front part of the tooth and time until the piece will eventually come loose and just pop out. Now from the quickness of this video, it may not be apparent, but these wisdom teeth take a lot of problem solving in real time, especially if you try and do as little cutting of the bone as possible. But even though it looks difficult, they always come out like this one is here finally coming out. Normally after the first root comes out, the next one will follow pretty soon after normally. You will especially see here how the second root as it comes loose wants to roll out forward and how it would have never came out if the tooth were stopping it right in front of it, which is why we needed to separate the two halves of the tooth. Now this is something also common you'll see. Here the root is still stuck in the socket even though it is completely loose. So I need to find the right instrument to roll it out in just the right way so it comes out. Like I said, it's problem solving. It's almost like a puzzle. It's kind of fun after a while. Now, after the tooth is out, let me just pause to show you how big of a socket this leaves behind. And this size socket is normal for this kind of impaction. So after you've seen it and you can kind of see the bottom of the socket and how deep it is, here I use ozonated water to flush out the socket. Recent studies have shown that this helps reduce the post-operative pain. And I also place a little resorbable membrane that assists in blood clotting as well. Then what I do is I just suture all of this together. Watch my daily dental care video I have posted now for the best technique, tips, and product recommendations for a stunningly clean mouth that avoids tooth decay, gum disease, and gives you fresh breath. The best dental products that I recommend are in Amazon affiliate links in the description below, or you can order them from the store below if you are on a handheld device. And then you don't even have to leave YouTube to order those. If in Southern California, my dental office is in the description as well. Like and subscribe to my channel if you have teeth.